Okay, good morning. I'm afraid I'm going to have to present in English as my French is not good enough to attempt this. So you have to forgive me. Okay, so we're going to present to you some research Janet and I have been working on looking at the leisure riding sector in the UK um, and particularly how horse riders use the countryside and public rights of way. It's an area that we don't think has been looked at very seriously um, at all. So we're kind of looking at uh, why do people use the countryside, how do they use it, what kind of problems do they have. So to give you a little bit of background to begin with, a little bit of context about the horse industry in the UK, um, there was a study done uh, by the British Horse Industry Confederation last year, uh, so these are quite up-to-date figures, and they found you know, that we've got three and a half million people in Britain rode in the year 2010 to 11, and about 1.6 million of them rode at least once a month. So we've got a fairly uh, large amount of regular riders. The majority of them are quite young, but there's also been a big growth in the over 45 age group, so perhaps a shift in the type of people that are riding. Um, a good point from kind of a tourism perspective is that this is not a particularly seasonal activity in the UK. 98% of riders are riding all year round, so there's obviously a potential for this to be um, you know, a, a positive thing. Um, for perhaps winter tourism um, outside of the peak season. We've got a, quite a lot of horses in the UK. The figures are always approximate because we don't have a very good um, system of registering, registering and kind of tracking horses. Um, but we believe there's close to a million, uh, including those owned by professional riders. Um, and also the equestrian sector contributes a significant amount to the UK economy, so approximately £3.8 billion a year, um, and then if we add racing into that, that doubles, and also we can add larger equestrian events on top as well. So we're talking about quite a significant um, sector, uh, certainly in terms of economic contribution, in terms of jobs, um, and in terms of, kind of tourism contribution as well. So there's these kind of 3.5 million or maybe 1.5 million regular riders, but only about 80,000 of those riders are affiliated to the three major sports organisations in the UK. So we can say that the majority of the riders in the UK are what we would term leisure riders. So not serious sports competition, competitors in dressage, show jumping and eventing. They tend to be um, doing these more leisure activities. So maybe taking part in low-level competitions, doing things like um, hunting, natural horsemanship, and then particularly for um, our research, taking part in trail riding. So riding out in the countryside, um, using the public rights of way. And this is the um, section that we're particularly concentrating on here. So there's a, a fair bit of knowledge about the more competitive side of equestrian sports in the UK, and particularly about horse racing, but very little is known about this quite large uh, section of riders. Okay, so again, another little bit of context for you, just to explain a bit about um, the public rights of way system in England and Wales. It's rather complicated, which has implications for how people use the countryside. So we have these different um, types of tracks that different users can uh, use. So within England and Wales, there is no kind of right to roam the countryside. We do not have automatic free access to all the different countryside routes. And horse riders are allowed to use any of the kind of three bottom ones, so the blue arrows, the purple arrows, and the red arrows. Horse riders are allowed, on, allowed onto those tracks um, only and public roads as well. Okay, so this is a very much a kind of um, a system that people need to understand if they're going to be able to use uh, the countryside on horseback. So um, this little diagram just shows you of England's um, rights of way network how many of them are available to horse riders. So the big section, the kind of um, cream section, that's a public footpaths and horse riders are not allowed to use them. So they're allowed to use um, just over 20% of the public rights of way system. So it's fairly constrained. Um, 
Well, they were still talking about, you know, quite a lot, um, 30,000 miles worth of network across England. Okay, so there's this kind of framework within which people can use the countryside, and it's a relatively, as I say, a relatively small amount of um, the English countryside is available for recreation by legal right. And this obviously has consequences for how people feel they can go out and use that space. They feel they need to follow you know, the rules, we need to make sure we're on the correct paths. Um, and within kind of the way we're framing this from a, a kind of a theoretical sense is we're kind of questioning whether when riders go out and use the countryside, are they actually doing this in this kind of free, relaxed way of accessing something natural? Or is it actually really rather a constrained practice that they're doing? So following these paths, um, behaving in certain ways uh, when they're out in the countryside in the way that they act, in the way that they dress, and in the way that they behave when they meet other users, so whether horse riders or walkers or cyclists. Okay, so we're also um, looking at it in terms of how the use of the countryside is perhaps changing, certainly within a, a British context and, and probably in other areas as well. Um, and this um, study that we have on the board here uh, by Brown et al. Has, has looked at how use of the countryside is becoming increasingly commodified, increasingly regulated and increasingly commercialised as well. So there's mass participation in the countryside. This is being encouraged by the government in terms of active leisure, in terms of healthy lifestyle. Um, but this is being done in a very kind of particular way. So people are following specified routes. They're expecting that these routes will be very clear and well signposted when they get there. This has consequences in terms of people's skills when they use the countryside. So there is a decrease in people's ability to read maps, to find their own routes, because they are expecting that to be set out for them before they get there. Um, and obviously this has big consequences for you know, people using the countryside and, and how um, confident they feel in going out and finding their own ways. Okay, so when it, we think about horse riders specifically, um, we are wondering really with how comfortable do horse riders feel in going out and finding their way in the countryside? Do they feel comfortable enough to get a map out, find where the different bridleway routes are, and then go off and ride that? Or do they tend to stick to routes that they know are okay? So tried and tested, the same routes are used um, repeatedly um, because they know they're safe, they know they're easy, they know how to do it. So this is kind of um, the questions I think that kind of underlies our research a little bit, which Janet is going to talk to you about now. Right, so um, just to um, run very briefly through the um, investigative tools, this is very much a study from the inside. Both Kate and I um, ride, and we have um, good access to the p kind of people that we're, we're talking to, people who use the countryside in a non-competitive way um, with their horses. So um, we mainly carried out um, a lot of observation and participatory action research backed up by online research and um, focus group discussions. The market research, to some extent, that came up with the results that you would expect. Um, the vast majority of horse riders in the UK at, at non-competitive level, well, generally, actually, are women, something like 90%. Um, a very large number of them would consider horse holidays in the UK, and not surprisingly, they want good quality off-road riding, beautiful scenery, um, good facilities for them and their horses. Um, and increasingly, they get their information from the internet. The, uh, we, we did uh, focus group discussions um, with interviews which were then transcribed, which proved very, very interesting in a number of ways. Um, there is a good um, network of clubs and societies, affinity groups for horse riders in the UK, um, and they do um, a, a pretty good job of putting on um, uh, facilities, um, competition, uh, sort of low-level competitions and excursions for people um, within the countryside. Um, 
We also, um, ourselves, Kate and I, are involved in an organisation called Ride Yorkshire, which is a way of putting into practice what we believe to be the case in helping people to enjoy the countryside more, but to create perhaps a more um, regulated way in which they can do that. Because we already started to become aware that people are finding it difficult to in, uh, in, in difficult in, uh, to map read and to find their way in the countryside, and increasingly they um, like to take part in organised pleasure rides of various kinds. So we have actually been organising some of those and um, uh, well judging people's reactions. So <clears throat> what we found is that there, the, that there is this anxiety about riding in open country, which did not exist so much uh, 30 or 40 years ago, but then we're also aware that the kind of people who ride has changed over the last 40, 30 or 40 years. There is a, a much greater social spectrum of people now involved in riding. Many more people now own horses who wouldn't have done in the past, and um, they're not necessarily country dwellers. Many of these people um, live in cities. They keep their horses in livery stables on the edge of cities, and they have some anxiety about venturing out into um, open country. And they actually, if, if they, they kind of know that there are bridleways, but they don't always understand the public rights of way network um, in the way that Kate uh, described it early on, where they can ride and where they should not ride. Um, so, um, for instance, um, in one of the comments we got was that um, we'll often get people ring up and say, where are the bridleways? They don't think of getting a map. They sort of expect us to tell them. So that kind of indicates the, the lack of awareness about the public rights of way network in the countryside. Um, the, we, we, we asked the question as to whether there were conflicts with other um, countryside users such as walkers and cyclists and generally we found that in fact the, the, the situations were, were not, there was not a lot of conflict, some situations of conflict but generally that was less than we expected. But what we did find was that people have, riders have a tendency to use routes which they know. They go on the same kind of one hour route close to their home, close to the livery stable, and don't often venture further afield. Um, so people like to go on the pleasure rides because then everything's done for them. They don't have to think about where they're going. They just can follow the way marks and they can chat as they're going round. And, and that is one aspect we found of the riding clubs and of social, of leisure riding generally, is that there is a very, very strong social aspect to, to, to what's going on. Perhaps that's partly a feature of the fact that so many leisure riders are women. So um, the pleasure endurance rides have proved extremely popular. Again, people like to come. They talk to each other as they go around. They talk about their horses. Um, and to some extent, it's um, perhaps um, a way of creating um, an identity of themselves as leisure riders. So what we found is that there is a whole range of factors, including um, a relative inexperience of, of horse owners, um, anxiety about traffic. Our roads in the UK tend to be very busy. Um, and an increasing, um, increasingly risk-averse culture, culture. People are uh, actually quite anxious about doing things which, which are not um, as regulated, not regulated. Um, and those feed into the tendency, which we mentioned earlier, for an increasing regulation of activities um, by, such as um, by riding clubs and organised rides. And to some extent, there is a self-imposed restriction on free riding, which, is, which has been quite interesting. People are actually very reluctant just to go off on their own and explore the countryside. And we have found that there's been a similar move in other um, areas of countryside activity, such as walking. Um, people tend to use um, regulated routes, they rarely explore, um, and to some extent there are right ways of walking. People wear the right kind of clothes, they talk in the right sort of language, they talk to um, each other in the, in, in the, right, uh, in, in the right way and, and, and behave. So those are our conclusions. We are continuing our, our research and we expect to investigate um, a good deal more about the identity of riders and how they perceive the countryside as uh, mediated by their relationship with their horses. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Annette.
Thank you very much, Jonathan Cade. I don't know. Yes? You can hear me.